talk, what do you think the first step would be to solve this? Yeah. Combining like terms. Okay. Are there like terms on the same side of the equal sign? No. They're on opposite sides of the equal sign. And that is our goal. We want to get anything connected to the variable on one side and anything that's just a number on the other side. I'm going to start that by subtracting the 5. And typically, this is done in two steps. We would subtract the 5 from both sides, leaving us with 8m on the left and 6m minus 4 on the right. But I like shortcuts. If I'm subtracting the 5 and moving it to the right, that means I want to get the 6m to the left side of the equal sign, right? So I can do that in the same step. And for me to keep track of it and make sure that I'm zeroing something out on both sides, after I draw my line showing that I'm subtracting these, I cross out the term that zeroes out. It's pretty easy to see with these because there's only two terms on each side of the equation, but sometimes there's more than that, and crossing this out to show that you've zeroed that out is a really good way of just making sure that you've moved things in the right places. 8m minus 6m is going to give us 2m equals what kind of 4? A negative 4. And then we're going to divide both sides by 2. m is going to be equal to negative 2. If we had more room here, I would have us check it, but we don't. So we're just going to move on and do a different example. <clears throat> I'd like us to skip down to number five. What do you see in number five that needs to be taken care of first? We have to distribute, and what are we distributing? So I'm gonna draw my claw and show it. I don't like using A as a variable, but we will. 9A, because my A's tend to look like nines if I do them wrong. <laughs> Okay, then let's agree. I'm going to change it to x. Okay. It's just a variable. So this is going to be 6x plus 24. Once distributed property is taken care of, now we can go and combine like terms. We want to get the 6x to be with its partner, 9x. It's a positive 6x, so we're going to subtract it. 24 has no like term, so it's just going to stay as is. And we're going to get 3x is equal to 24. And what do we do then? Divide by 3. And x, or a, is equal to 8. So that's how we solve equations that have variables on both sides of the equal sign. We're just combining like terms and getting the variable on one side, the numbers on the other, and simplifying until we get down to what the variable is equal to. There are two kinds of special cases, though. There are what we call identity and what we call no solution. Sound familiar? Okay, let's go through and solve. In this case, and you can't always tell from the beginning, I'll be honest with you, it's not until you get to your solution that you're often going to see if this is a regular equation where a variable equals a number, or if it's identity or no solution. So let's just go through, first we're going to distribute this 3, and on the other side of the equation we're going to distribute the 6, we're going to get 12x plus 6 is equal to 12x plus 6. What do you notice about that? They're the same. They're the same. If you haven't noticed it, because sometimes they're reverse where it would be like 6 plus 12x and you're just solving the problem and you haven't noticed yet. Let's go ahead and subtract the 12x from both sides. And we end up getting 6 equals 6. Is that true or not? It is true. So this is a true statement. And what that means that any number out there in the world could be put in for this x, and this would still be true. So that means, since it's always true, no matter what number is put in, it equals the identity. 
probably shouldn't put that there. I'm running out of room. And I want you to think about properties of math, where we have the identity property. In multiplication, identity property is when we multiply anything times one. What happens if, if I multiply anything times one? It stays the same. In addition, the identity property is adding anything plus zero. And what happens with that? It also stays the same. This is the identity of an e equation because any number I put in for x is going to make this equation equal to itself. And it's always going to come out that way. Now let's talk about no solution. First thing we want to do is always just try to sol solve the problem. I'm going to write the left side just as it is. And on the right side, we have some distributive property. 5 times negative 3 is going to get us negative 15. negative 15n. And 5 times positive 2 is going to get us 10. 10. Okay. I want to combine like terms. So I'm going to move the 2 to be with the 10. And I'm going to move this 15n to be with this 15n. This is going to zero out. What's going to happen here? It's going to zero out. What does that leave me with on the left side of this equation? Zero. zero. This is zeroed out. And then we have eight. It, is zero equal to eight? It's not possibly equal to eight. This is not true. So when you end up with an equation that you have brought it down to the last things that are there and it doesn't equal each other, either you've made a mistake or there's no solution. There is no number I could put in for that n that would make this equation equal. Does that make sense? Okay. So there are four problems on here that I want you to practice on your own. And then I have a little mini booklet for you. And I also have your notebooks because I collected them the other day and graded them. This is a practice assessment. It is almost identical to the assessment that you will take tomorrow. You can use your notebooks on this. It starts with like, what are like terms? Just circling them. Then you're simplifying an expression. Then you're gonna be looking at a mistake somebody made. Let me zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. Okay, so this is an error analysis problem. This person made a mistake, find it. What's the best way to find it? You solve it yourself and see where there's a difference, right? On the inside, we have some equation practicing, which is follow up to what we've been doing um, Friday and today. And over on this page, there's just some more complex problems to solve and another error analysis. And that's it. And that's what the quiz is going to look like tomorrow, too. So after I stop up here, I'm going to have notebooks to get back to you guys. Um, and you're just going to have time to. We're not going to do this flap with this today. We'll come back to it at some point when we need to worry about word problems, but we're not there yet. OK? Um, and these two things, you will want to be getting glued in when they're finished today.